Welcome, my name is Isabella Peters, I'm from the ZBW, um, this is the German National Library for Economics and we are here at the Science 2.0 conference in Hamburg and at this conference we talk pretty much about uh, opening up science and we sometimes forget the legal issues um, which are there and which we have to consider and that's why it's my yeah, pleasure to interview Professor Erik Steinhauer today, um, who is from the Fernuniversität Hagen and also the Humboldt University in Berlin. And so maybe we start our interview by yes. asking the question, so how would you define openness when it comes to research and science? Uh, for me, openness has two meanings. First, it is access to scientific content. Uh, if I say content, I mean publications in the main. But data sets become more and more important as a source for further research. Further research is a good cue for the second meaning of openness. Content is also open if you can reuse it um, as a starting point for your own research or if you want to collaborate with your colleagues, with others, um, to make their research a common thing. Okay. Um, but then, you know, many researchers have, well, not problems with legal issues, but maybe there are some threats and they hinder mm -hmm. researchers to open up their scientific results. So what are the major threats? Uh, openness and publicity uh, both is a problem. You have to respect the personal and intellectual rights of other people carefully. If everyone can see what you are doing in your research um, in the so-called analog age, uh, the research was behind the doors. No one had to think about legal issues as long as your work is out of public uh, observation. The more science becomes open, the more legal issues, legal matters arise. Okay. When we talk about legal issues, we also always talk about copyright mm, and yes. other problems. Um, so is there a copyright problem or yeah, what is it what we have to face? Um, uh, yeah, I sadly true. Copyright is very, very uh, important. Uh, I think we have to talk about three reasons. First, the scientists are unfamiliar with legal aspects of their work, um, but they have to care about it because digital scientific content is reproduced every time we, we use it. The traditional copyright has no proper answer for this ongoing and ongoing copying, so the researchers have to lie license their stuff, but they neglect it too often. The second reason is media disruption. It is not easy to digitize printed uh, material and to use it online. The problems are too long term of copyright and the absence of uh, proper limitation in the copyright acts. I just want to mention the Google book case, for example. The third problem is um, the unity of copyright. High energy physics and Harry Potter are under the same copyright rule. But the economic interests <laughs> of course, very different different. And if you want to improve copyright limitation situation for scientific purposes, you will feel the power of lobbying of the content <laughs> industry. So there's only a little hope that we will see here uh, a legislative solution. So when we talk about the about internet research, mm. it's not only about um, the power of lobbying, but it's also about the power of the masses, the power of collective intelligence. and. Um, researchers do not only open up their science or their research, but they also use um, what they found on the internet, mm. so the, the user-generated content. So, for example, when they t study Twitter data, Yes. So which legal problems do they face then? Yeah, Twitter data is a good example. That's not only copyright we have to think about, but all other fields of intellectual property, uh, like trademarks, related rights, like right of scientific editions, right of edits, so princess first edition, perhaps if you so publish an unpublished work for the first time, and it can be in the internet for the first time. Uh, it's very interesting, right of photographs, very interesting if you scan old, old books. But besides intellectual property, the database right is important if you're doing text and data mining, of course, but also, and that is for Twitter, personal right has great significance, data privacy, for example. Finally, there's a twilight zone between uh, law and ethics in the field of academic integrity. I only mention the theft of ideas, false quotations, plagiarism, and so on. Open science in the internet will foster discussions and show conflicts connected to this subject. Yeah. 
Thank you very much, yes, Erik Steinhauer, you. for this interview. And I guess we have to start the discussions on the legal issues on, in, on Science 2.0.